I've got seven game-changing tips for editing in DaVinci Resolve, and actually it's more than seven tips, so if you think you know something when I start talking about it, there's going to be some secret sauce likely hidden within there. Let's dive right in with tip number one, which is selection follows playhead. So when you're editing and you select a clip and you start to play through or scrub through, that clip stays selected. And that can be a problem. Say I want to quickly go through my timeline and make some changes. If I start zooming in, you'll notice nothing is being affected on this clip. Even if I do it in the viewer itself, nothing is changing. Well, that's because it's happening all the way back here. And that's not good when you want to be fast and efficient. You want to be able to click through that timeline and make your changes. So you can go up to timeline, video, selection, follows, playhead. But that's a little too much clicking for me. And I like to turn it on and off for certain reasons that I'm about to show you. So I have mapped it to this key right here. Now, all of my keyboard shortcuts, you can download for free, put them into your DaVinci Resolve, and that is linked down below. But I'll still show you how to do everything without needing the keyboard shortcut. So with it turned on, you will notice as I'm scrubbing through, it is selecting the clips as I go. And it's always going to select whatever clip is on top. Now you can change that by turning off the auto track selector here. If I don't want it to select this text, as I scrub through, you'll notice it bypassed that top layer and went to the one below. So why would I ever want to turn this off? Well, let's say I'm working on this clip here and I change the sizing a little bit and I want to see how it plays through. The moment I hit play, it has selected the text again. So I will turn that off, select my clip, and now I can make my changes while it's playing without it selecting the track on top. Once I'm finished doing that, turn it back on and I can continue making my edits. Now, one thing to keep in mind with this is that once it selects a clip, it's going to play that clip until its cut point. You'll see here, I have this B-roll clip on top, and as I play, it did not select it. Well, that's because we haven't reached a cut point here. So once I reach that cut point, it's moving on to the next clip. So while you're playing through, still keep an eye on it and making sure it's selecting the clip that you want, but it does make it a whole lot easier. All right, tip number two is going to be viewer mode. Now, you probably already know about this button up here, and that switches between single viewer, or you can do dual viewer mode and see them both at the same time. Now, I go back and forth with this a lot. So I've mapped it to the tab key. So I can quickly and easily switch between single viewer mode and dual viewer mode. Now, the secret sauce with this viewer mode is if I have a clip selected, especially with Selection Follows Playhead, when I hit F, it's going to pull it up in that source viewer. So I can really see, was there a better take here, a better angle, or something else that I might want to bring in instead of that clip. Better yet, I can hit Option F and it will reveal it in my media pool. Makes it super quick and easy to make little changes or to see if, uh, see if maybe you missed something. All right, tip number three is Shift Delete. Now we all know you can delete a clip and you have a couple options to move everything over. You can hit Option Y to select everything right of Playhead and drag that over. You can click the gap in the middle and hit Delete and drag everything over. That's a lot of work, that's a lot of clicks, taking away time. So if you select your clip and just hit shift and then delete, it will move everything over for you. Now be careful when you're doing this because it's going to move all of the tracks. If you have things lined up to music, it's gonna cut that music track as well. If you don't want it to cut your music track, you can see down here I have my music. I can go ahead and lock it. And as I hit shift delete now, my audio track has stayed in place. All right, tip number four is going to be just page navigation. Now, I know we're supposed to go from edit to fusion to color to Fairlight to deliver in order, but we all jump around a little bit. I like to color grade clips and then kind of go back to editing. So instead of clicking down there, I just hit shift three and that will take me to color. Shift four will take me to deliver because those are the ones I'm usually kind of bouncing around the most between. I'll still go to Fairlight and Fusion, but shift two, edit, three, color, four, deliver. All right, now this next tip is something that we've been wanting for a really long time, and that's shift space. Now, if you've ever dove into Fusion, you know in order to find your effects, you hit shift and space, and that's how you can find all of the scary effects that come in Fusion. But now you can hit shift space 
on the edit page. And that's gonna bring up all of your effects and even the history of what you've used recently. So I can search blur and Gaussian blur and you can see it has added it to that clip. What's great about this is I can keep my media pool open. I no longer have to click into effects here and search for the effects up there and go down to searching all folders. It's just searching every effect right there on the edit page. And your secret sauce here, it's on the color page too. This next tip is for some of my slow-mo filmers out there. When you have a bunch of slow motion clips, I used to film action sports, and it was very time consuming. You had to drag them onto the timeline and then use one of my custom keyboard shortcuts, Command R, and you could drag it out to make it slower, or maybe you would hit R to bring up the clip speed, just so you could see it in slow motion to see if you liked it at all. Well, not anymore. Because if I click my 120 frames per second clip here, as I play it back, yeah, it's trying poorly to play it back for me. And if you have lots of clips, you can select all of them and it will do this to every single one. Right click, go to clip attributes and change it to my timeline frame rate. This is uh, 24 or 23976. Now in the viewer, you'll see this is in slow-mo and every clip I would select and do that too would now be in slow-mo. Now, be careful. Make sure you do this before dragging it into your timeline. This is a global adjustment. If you already had it in your timeline somewhere and then you do this, it's, it's gonna be all out of whack and you're gonna have to create new in and out points and bring them in. Okay, to finish strong with something that I can't believe a lot of the pro and seasoned editors don't know at this point is video or audio only. So I'm gonna hit tab, get my source viewer up here, and uh, let's hit Z to fill another custom keyboard shortcut. So go download that. So let's say during this section I'm talking, I want to put some B-roll on top. Well, if I just click and drag from the media pool, it's bringing both the video and the audio. So I'd either have to option click and delete that audio, and that's just too much time. Or you can click right here, and drag that in and it's going to be video only. And right next to it, you have audio. If for some reason I wanted audio only, maybe a voiceover, but I recorded myself. But that's still not good enough for me. This dropdown says insert video and audio, insert video only or insert audio only. Now with insert video only, when I click and drag it from anywhere, it's just the video. But better than that, if I set my in and out point, and then hit Shift P to place on top, it's only placing the video. I don't have to worry about it placing the audio and overriding and getting all funky. So I can quickly play through my whole entire timeline, find the B-roll that I want, double click, I, O, Shift P, and it's going to place it right on top and just be the video. And I cannot tell you how many hours that has saved me when I'm placing B-roll on top of my main timeline, my skeleton edit, it just makes things super fast. If you're still here, you get a little reward. Let's rapid fire through uh, a couple more little shortcuts and things to make this faster. But before we do, please go check out this recent video. It was a lot of work and if I were a betting man, I would guess that you also film and maybe you're a solo creator and this video is all about how to film yourself more cinematically and kind of get that awesome look. Put a lot of work into it. Okay, rapid fire, um, shift scroll, that's gonna change your track height. Option scroll is gonna change your zoom. Shift Z is to fit the entire timeline to your view. You hit shift Z again, and it goes back to the zoom amount that you were at. Massive time saver. Click and hold option and drag a clip to duplicate it. And uh, what else, what else? Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next video. Toodles. Well, oh, I had my nicotine on the table that whole time. Don't do drags. Okay. Toodles.